there are so many different things that I could interview on. I probably have 20 more questions, but for the sake of the listeners, one of my favorite chapters in your book was on optimizing your anxiety. And it was one of my favorite chapters because it's very similar to a chapter I have coming out in my own book, which is about how do you perform on the edge without going over the edge? And it's interesting because in this chapter, you bring up one of my favorite professors who I interviewed earlier this year, Chicago Booth professor, Eilat Fishback, who's an expert on the science of motivation. And why is it so important for us to turn inward and ask yourself, how comfortable are you? And how did this lead you to finally finding this passion for teaching at Harvard? So anyone out there who's ever run a marathon can relate to this or any kind of race where you had to train for or any kind of endurance event that took months of tremendous focus and times when you were like, why am I doing this? I've run three marathons, mostly as a form of self-torture, but also to work a different type of motivational system where I tend to power through things. You can't power through a marathon. You have to put in the work. My point being, I remember when I ran my first marathon and I put so much effort and I had like dropped almost 50 pounds. And New York Times even wrote an article about my transformation. But I put in, lost so much weight, had done it. And then I was depressed. I was like, huh, that was really a big letdown. And I love studies and I've started doing research and just looking into it. And it's a common phenomenon from anybody, Olympians. It's this sort of letdown that we all feel. So what does that lead me to? I firmly believe that the joy of living is in the striving. And it's not actually in the winning. The winning is the illusion because we need to quantify how we're doing. But at the end of the day, it's not the objective. The objective is the endless pursuit of growth, of trying to touch the ceiling of our potential to bring us closer to God and the universe, to know why we're here, what can we do? And so when you accept that fact, that's when you enlist on the mission of my book, right? It's to pursue a life of perpetual growth. And why is it so important to focus on anxiety? Because if you try to eliminate all anxiety from your life, you also will not unlist on missions that make you uncomfortable, which is where the growth lies. Because you will see discomfort as something to be avoided. You'll see discomfort as a sign of your body telling you something or your emotions telling you something that you're in the wrong place. And that's actually not true if you want to live a life of perpetual growth. You need to see discomfort as part of a feedback loop that is an anxiety go hand in hand. Discomfort is what triggers the anxiety. If you eliminate it all, it hinders excellence and you can't do anything. If it overcomes you, it impedes the ability to perform. It paralyzes you. So when I go into the book, I love that you like talking about this, but I go into the book, the science of it and the original sort of Yerkes Dotson law that talks about this, but the science is irrelevant. It's very common sense that you want to try to strike a balance between triggering your anxiety by putting yourself in uncomfortable positions, but managing it so that it does not overtake you. I talk about how I went on the set of Shark Tank and I catastrophized so much about all these unrelated things that the imposter syndrome and the anxiety almost made it impossible for me to perform. But when I went on the second time, it felt so natural to me that I belonged there the whole time that it made it hard for me to perform. <laughs> so I explained <laughs> both things on Shark Tank. So I tend to resist habituation more than necessary because habituation makes me so comfortable that it actually makes it hard for me to perform. So these are all very abstract concepts. That's why I devote a whole chapter to how to strike a balance between opt anxiety that drives you and the anxiety that paralyzes you. And that's the state of optimal anxiety. And there's great examples in the book. Our head coach, Eric Mangini at the Jets at the time, I used to think it was so nuts, but I began to understand there was a method to this madness. He would put the players in the indoor bubble and he would blast heavy metal at the loudest level to make it impossible for the players to communicate. So they had to use signals so they could emulate what would it be like to be playing in the Metrodome at the time. So anxiety is a really important thing and something that we don't talk about a lot. Like a lot of people have come to me since reading my book. Thank you for talking about anxiety at your level. And I'm like, what well, you think I don't have it? Are you insane? <laughs> Imagine walking into Harvard Business School as a teacher for the first time. I never stepped foot in a classroom. I walk into Harvard Business School as a once high school dropout and I got to teach. Fast forward four years later, it's one of the most popular immersive programs in the school and it feels second nature like, oh, I belong here. In fact, back to anxiety, I got to find new ways to freak me out so that I perform at my best. <laughs> Well, I would love to take a class myself that has a chain smoker, Brock himself and others, Gary V, who come in as guest lecturers. So awesome. And by the way, just to spend one second on that. So without giving everyone the background, I talk about it and burn the books, but the important part to know, by 
being a newcomer, an imposter to a space, one of the benefits and the gifts of it is that you don't have context about what's minimum viable performance, right? What's the minimal acceptable effort that is going to make this a passable performance? And if you're somebody who has a bit of anxiety that fuels you and the pleaser complex, whatever it is that drives you to be the best, as a result, when you don't have context, you're going to do way more than necessary. So the first course I ever did at HBS we did, me and my partner, Len Schlesinger, who's an amazing professor at school. We did 21, 22, 22 classes, and I brought in every rock star CEO, worked so hard in this curriculum, bought in the Gronkowski brothers to kick everyone's butt at 7 a.m., literally all of them. <laughs> like it, When I look back, it was like the theater of the absurd. And at the end of the class, now men, mind you, I'm struggling the whole week thinking, was this any good? The, the class stands up and they give me a standing ovation. I'm trying not to lose my composure. My professor, Len, turns to me and goes, well, this doesn't happen normally. <laughs> and then at the end, one of my greatest possessions, one of the students handed me a note, a handwritten note. He said, read this when you get home. I get home, I open the letter. And he basically said, look, I decided that Harvard was not for me. doesn't have enough of an entrepreneurial vibe. And I was going to leave the school until I took your class. And your class was so amazing and transformative that it delivered value for my entire education. A lot is wrapped up in that little note. What happens when you channel your anxiety to deliver your best? What happens when you put yourself in really uncomfortable positions, the magic that is created? So back to the overall premise of the book, I really believe that everybody listening to this right now has a leverageable asset that they could take advantage in their life that can move them along this continuum of journey to push the potential of their life, to do something they've never done before that in their mind are thinking it's not for me. It's not possible. It can't happen for me. And I tried to take these abstract concepts and reduce them down to stories and anecdotes and principles to make you really believe that anything is truly possible. I am not exceptional. I just have done the work and done the journey. And hopefully when you read it, you think, oh, I can do that too.